So let's talk about the relationship uh, between the two clubs off the pitch, which, what would you say, Guillermo, is unusually close at the moment or closer than people might expect? Yeah, I think for for Spanish people, we are getting used to, to see Real Madrid and Barca together in many events. La Porta and Florentino now, they are like best friends because they have a, a common goal that is uh, the Super League. So, yeah, it, it, I think it is still impact amaze people but we are getting used to to it um and and they are i think that they have a great relationship if i say which is the uh, club with best relationship if i talk about real madrid uh, maybe i would say barcelona they are like brothers now <laughs> yeah with the with this project they they um, i mean they they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of things to 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 do because uh, the Super League project is something that is not working. But but yeah, it's a um, it's a goal that has uh, obliged obliged them to to be together. And they need each other, don't they, Paul? Because uh, without each other, and actually with without each other, <clears throat> excuse me, being relatively successful. They are nowhere near as go back to the commercial stuff. They're nowhere near as commercially attractive without each other. Yeah, I think that one of the things that made La Liga a really exciting product, uh, like fifteen years ago, um, was that Barcelona and Real Madrid rivalry with Guardiola, Mourinho, Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo. I think that La Liga like pushed for this kind of model of having like two absolutely big giants with the best players in the world and probably that that didn't make a favor to, to the rest of the teams um and now um with the past of time and the impact of the Premier League basically I think that the fact of seeing Real Madrid and Barcelona together um tells a lot about the Premier League being in the driving seat um the Premier League being more powerful having probably some of the best players in the world and Barcelona and Real Madrid not being able to catch up and that's why they in my opinion, why they unite forces because they feel that this is needed basically, and this is something that uh, La, La, La Liga and the Spanish football and the Spanish giants uh, above everyone needs just to become again uh, uh, the European force that they were back in the days. Do, do, do fans of other La Liga clubs recognise that these two need to be successful, Derma? I can't imagine being a Valencia. I can't imagine being a Valencia fan. I think oh, I could really do with Real Madrid and Barcelona getting back to to their glory days because it will help us. No, <laughs> the fans of other clubs around La Liga um, enjoy seeing the the big two in, in trouble. Like when Barcelona are going through problems, they um, like the financial issues and everything. There's been a good bit of. Of Schadenfreude around around the league, there's been a, a good few people complaining that um like the, the way that Barcelona are, are trying to get out of their problems through uh, all the levers they're activating and not just selling their best players um is is annoying them because that's what they have had to do. If you're Valencia or if you're Sevilla and you have problems in financial problems, you just have to sell your best players. But Barca seem to feel that they can they can find another way around it. Um on just uh with Guillermo, I met Guillermo here in Madrid just before Christmas, just before we became. We became officially colleagues. We were at an event at the Ritz and um, a, a breakfast event where were you were you at, well, you were at the Ritz for breakfast. Is that how you <laughs> were officially? Is that how you tapped him up to cover? Are you allowed to do that? that that's how we roll in. Uh, wow, in, in Spanish football. Well, I mean, the athletic in Spain is different to the athletic in the UK. Let me tell you, it, it was it was a bit surreal because you saw uh, Florentino and and Laporta came in together, um, and they were kind of. They're two. They're kind of small guys. They're like Florentino's into his seventies now. Laporta is Laporta's sixty, and they came in with the the German head of the the Super League, the guy who's fronting the, the Super League now. Reichardt kind of guided them to to their seats, um, and then went up to explain how the Super League is not dead. Where Laporta and and Florentino didn't speak at this event, but they were there to to show they were they were together, the solidarity that they were behind it, um, which is a, a big piece that that I put up on on the site today. And it's just weird because if you remember, like Florentino was the guy who took Figo from Barcelona. That's how Florentino became the, the Madrid president was like to rip the heart out of, of Barcelona. Then you remember like Barca fans throwing the pig's head at Figo, move on to Mourinho versus Guardiola, Mourinho poking his, uh, his finger into Tito Villanova's eye. Like that's the kind of 
that's what we think of uh, as the classical. They're the, the kind of images of the two. They hate each other. They, you know, Barca are the Catalan guys. Madrid are the, the conservative yeah. guys in the Spanish capital. Barca are like liberals. Madrid are conservative. There's a whole kind of political element to, to it that that made the classical great, as well as it being Messi against Ronaldo. Also, the, the political, cultural side to it was really attractive for, for me, anyway, when I started writing about La Liga and for a lot of our subscribers, I, I'd imagine, as well. And that's kind of gone away a bit now. You just see them, they're friendly together. The football's not quite as good as it was. It's fair to say there's not that edge to, to the games. Um, and the Super League is the thing that that's hanging over it. They're, they're together in that. They're all, like, super closely. And Guillermo said they're, like, brothers like Madrid are the big brother and Madrid are the ones who, who are pushing it. Barca are the ones who, who need to, to kind of cling on. Um, La Liga president Javier Tevez has made a lot out of this. He, every time, time he gets a chance, he'll point out that Barca just follow uh, Florentino's lead, whether it was Bartomeu before or Laporta now. For Madrid fans, they, some Madrid fans who are not sure whether they want to help Barcelona, it, it feels weird that even the money that Barca got for the levers in the summer, a lot of that was set up by people who are close to Florentino Perez, who are close to the Super League as well. So in a way, Madrid were helping Barca to sign Robert Lewandowski, which seems a weird thing, thing to do. And then at Barca, it's Florentino Perez. You think this guy is like, he's so, well, his image anyway is like Machiavellian. He's a guy who knows, who can pull the levers of power, who knows exactly what he's doing. And he's like, is he really helping us? Is this going to be in our interest to ally ourselves so closely with him? It looks like it is, but it's it's just... Well, it's it's fascinating to, to look into and to, to write about and to report about. Um, and it's it's also just kind of weird to, to see them so close together. But, but the implications there from Dermot Paul are this this relationship will stay as it is until they eventually get what they want, which is a European Super League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of think in exactly the same way, basically, because it's, it's what they need. And I agree with the fact that probably Real Madrid are the big brothers here. Uh, basically because Barcelona is in a tough position financially and they cannot be in the driving seat or, or they cannot be calling the shots when they don't really know um, if they are going to be able to sign players in summer. Um, so, yeah, just to try to fix all of this, uh, the Super League here in Spain in the big clubs, I think that it's seen as like the big escape, like the biggest uh, escape route from La Liga being undermined or not undermined, but like surpassed by the Champions League and the Premier League. But can La Liga, can La Liga stand up to them? Uh, they, they, they will do. Javier Tebas will do because it's the last thing that Javier Tebas wants. Um, I think that it's something that... I think that Javier Tebas has like um, pushed for that kind of model of having Barcelona and Real Madrid as the big giants of the country. Um, you just have to see at the um, TV income... Um, how it's like um, divided uh, in the uh, among the clubs in Spain with Barcelona and Real Madrid getting like the biggest share, and now it has backfired somehow with Real Madrid and Barcelona wanting out or wanting like a bigger thing. Um, I think that La Liga will try to stand against them, um, but the legal fight will 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 continue uh, throughout the weeks and the months. Yeah, like, when, when you're in. Sorry, go on, Dermot. No, I was just going to say like. It has backfired already to an extent because you can see, like, Madrid and Barcelona don't go to the Liga meetings anymore. Like, you have meetings of the committees at, at La Liga or all the club presidents get together. And Madrid and Barcelona don't go. They send a representative who's their lawyer for the Super League as well. And at those meetings, big decisions get made. Like, in, in November, there were tweaks to La Liga's salary cap rules, which put Barcelona, who are, already had problems meeting their salary for or their budget for this season, made it even more difficult for them. You know, they can't give Gavi a first team contract at the moment because of a tweak to the rules, which, you know, they weren't involved in agreeing that tweak, if you know what I mean. So they've kind of, by isolating themselves alongside Madrid and by going against Tebas all the time, La Liga people, if, if you speak to them, say that, oh, it just it was just a coincidence. You know, this is a, a good thing for La Liga in general. It just so happens that it, it's it's hurting Barcelona. But it, it just shows how isolated Madrid and Barcelona are at UEFA level. They're off the committees as well. You know, they fell out completely over the, the Super League. So Seferin takes any chance he gets to to kind of go against Madrid and Barcelona. Tebas as well. So the, the two of them are kind of, they're huge clubs and they're, they still have their massive fan bases and they still have an ability to generate a, a lot of money. But politically, they're just super isolated. And it's, well, from my point of view, I don't think it's in their interests. 